nothing about China's crackdown. They say nothing about the ISIS rape and kidnapping of girls. They say nothing about uh, what goes on in North Korea. Yet they focus on the little nation of Israel because they want to eliminate Israel. And why does the left want to eliminate Israel? Ask them that. Ask the leftists why they join the, the Islamists on campuses in particular to destroy Israel. Why? They don't have a, bigger, a better target than Israel. They couldn't divest from uh, Iran. They couldn't divest from North Korea or from China. Why are they attacking Israel? So you got to understand that a lot of these leftists are crazy, totally crazy. Leftists say they oppose authoritarianism, they oppose dictatorship, they support popular democratic rule. Israel has a vibrant parliamentary democracy with a broad range of views represented, and many of you people don't even understand it, that Arab parties and communists have long had representatives voted into the Israeli Knesset. How come we don't have uh, such a parliamentary system here? Now, what is, the, uh, um, what is that like in Egypt, Syria, Saudi Arabia? The answer is there's no uh, democracy there at all. So what do the leftists really want? At the end of the day, they just hate Jews, even if they're Jewish themselves. That's because their communism trumps their, ethnic, their ethnicity. And that's the same with Bernie Sanders. Bernie's, Bernie Sanders' socialism, communism, slash whatever you want to call it, trumps his uh, ethnic origins which is why he's so popular in the America uh, of today, because the American left has the same exact mentality. KSFO, Zev, why should we support Israel? Go ahead, please. Yes, Michael. Um, well, I think we should support them because a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, American military technology actually comes out of Israel. I can name a few if you like. Please do. I think it would be important for the edification of the listener. Well, for one, the, the unmanned aerial vehicles were developed and designed in Israel, and uh, and they have the, the Pioneer and the Hunter brand. They're the ones that are used by American technology, by, by, by American military. Also, the, for example, they also have the, 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 the navigation for the pilots. The, uh, the, the, the pilots, they have uh, a navigation where they can navigate with their eyes. They can navigate the, miss uh, the missiles just by looking at the screen. That's an Israeli invention? That's an Israeli invention, Zev? That's correct. It's an Israeli invention. Unbelievable. Well, yeah, that's astounding. Yeah, I've seen helicopter pilots and attack helicopters where they can look through an eyepiece in their helmet, attached to their helmet, and actually direct the fire of their missiles without, without moving their hands. The, the anti-missile tiles, the anti-missile tiles on the tanks, which explode outwardly when the missile hits the tanks were developed in Israel, is used by American technology, is by American military. It's all beautiful what you're saying. I only wish we had a commander-in-chief who would use the military in the proper way. That's the part that's missing here. Top it off. Well, why do you think Obama is supporting Iran, then, against Israel, Zev? I think it's, a lot, it's completely illogical, but I think the reason why he's doing it is... Purely, I mean, I think because he's Muslim and because he's, he has pure hatred for Israel, for the Jews. There's no other reason. So he he is like the left itself, demonizes Israel and hates Jews. Yeah. This so you're not taken in by the, you're not taken in by the yarmulke at Hanukkah in the White House. You're not uh, taken in by the you're not taken in by the sponge cake act. Not at all, Michael. And to, I, I just want to add something to what I said. Also, as far as the technology, not just military, agriculture, uh, medical technology that America uses, a lot of it comes out of uh, Israel. A lot of research and development companies, uh, such as Intel, uh, Motorola, uh, uh, IBM, you name it, they had. They all have their 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 offices uh, in Israel. Most of them. I'm glad. I'm glad we're having this discussion because it's very easy to make the assumption that Israel's simply a basket case that needs the support of America, and without America they wouldn't exist. So what you're doing now is bringing some facts to the discussion that we may not have known, known about. Also, Israel has over 3,000 high-tech companies that, which America utilizes. Stuff that was developed in Israel, you wouldn't even believe. As far as, far as their agricultural developments, the drip irrigation, for example, which saves water, which is being used in California in, in the drought areas, the drip irrigation, that alone is worth uh, everything. I, mean, I, I assume that you yourself are a technologist. Zev, you are a technologist? 
No, I'm not. I just uh, I was just listening to you, and I just googled. Uh, you know, you, you post. The- <laughs> you, you're pretty fast, though. You're pretty fast at what you do. I mean, you got some answers for us, and I took. Um, let us say, the devil's advocate position of why should we support Israel in a sort of cynical way, and you're answering, I think, beautifully. I, I also must also keep in mind that per 10,000 people, there's 145 scientists and technicians in the Israeli work, workforce versus 85 in America. You know, for the same population number, yes. I understand it's sad that the whole world has turned on the nation of Israel, but that's because Obama has chosen the chosen people to stigmatize them and try to drive them into the sea. Right. Ob- I think I don't want to go into this, but I think Obama is a reincarnated ancient Iranian, um, uh, very much like Haman. He is sort of the Haman of the Israeli uh, his- Israeli history. Uh, Haman was. It's not Khomeini that's his threat. That's the threat to Israel survival. It's Obama. But, you know, Zev, I have to broaden it. You know, the entire Democrat Party has turned in Israel. You know that as well, don't you? I follow, I follow what's happening. I listen to you daily, so I mean, I follow what's happening. And uh... Yeah, it's terrible. Well, Zev, stay on the line and give your name to Jim, because when Government Zero comes out, I want to make sure you get it, because of the, of the callers I've had today, you're going to explain to your listeners what's going on, your friends, rather, what's going on. I think this is a great show. KKAT, Mike. Why should we, if we should, support Israel, Mike? Give us some answers. Well, I have three reasons why we should help Israel. But first, I'd like to just say, uh, do you remember that Governor Huckabee pardoned three or four murderers and they went out and murdered again, and he pardoned some rapists and they went out and raped some women? and He didn't even say he was sorry about that. Don't know that, that part of uh, I, I know the issue came up because Huckabee is a great supporter of Israel. Uh, as, a, as an evangelical himself, I believe, he supports Israel. And he was attacked for that by a female commentator. And that's how this got started today. All right. Well, anyway, just I don't want a, a future president partnering murderers because he's nuts. Now, to get to Israel. Uh, the Bible says that he that helps Israel will be blessed by God. And he that hurts Israel will be cursed by God. So if the United States helps Israel, we'll be getting blessings. No, oh, I don't think... Well, do, you, do you think we're being blessed right now? No, not with Obama as president, because he's not helping Israel. All right, you make your point from the biblical uh, standpoint. BAP Dallas, Brian, why do, you, why do you think we should support Israel? Hey, Michael, I can think of at least four reasons, and the first was going to be biblical for me as well. But there's also a strategic reason in that if, or actually when that region blows up and we get involved in another ground war, Israel will be the only place that we can stage troops without having to worry about the population turning against us and attacking us from the rear. Politically, okay. it, well, I, do you th- hold it. That's an important statement, Brian. Do you think that that region will ever blow into a full-scale ground war? I think the Middle East will, absolutely. And I think they'll all come against Israel. Well, I think that that would include the United States. I think under Obama, he turned the U.S. military against Israel. Uh, I think he would be uh, at worst neutral because I don't think the American population would support a war against Israel. But Well, the American population doesn't support Obamacare. The American population doesn't support bringing 100,000 Muslims in from Syria. The American population doesn't support uh, Obama's uh, policies in any way. They never have and they never will. That's never stopped this, this dictator before. I don't think any, anything will stop him. There's no opposition to this man. That's true, but you have to remember that the U.S. military still has the right to refuse unlawful orders, and attacking an ally would fall into Well, the- that's a great question. Who is the U.S. military? He has conducted a purge going back many years. He's decapitated all the combat generals who would have blown the whistle on Benghazi. Who is left to, to actually stand up to him in the military? He's done what Stalin did, but instead of shooting them, first he debased them with lies, and then he threw them out of the military. And I, de- I by the way, I name all of them in a whole chapter in Government Zero. It's one of my biggest issues, national security. I point out which generals he's fired. People said to me, be specific. I have their names. I don't know where this military is, this imaginary military. Yeah, I have to agree with you. And he's trying to turn the the military ideologically to the left 
with a you know I, I I have to I have to raise this issue in an uncomfortable manner. The progressive army that Obama has created is not the army or military that you may think it is. He has done everything he can to throw out uh, the leadership in the Green Berets, in the Navy SEALs, in the military. And so the general army, which is a lot different than the groups I just mentioned, has been so brainwashed into becoming a progressive army, I don't know what kind of war it can fight. Do you know that in 2016 he can, he can issue an executive order? Well, I don't know about 2016. You know, it's coming along very soon. Mandating that all social, environmental, and other federal regulations apply, be applied to all branches of military service. And do you know what the military would look like then? Absolutely. Here's, here's another thing that I want you to think about. And this one worries me very deeply. You see the surge of the millions of refugees that are pouring into Europe? And what Europe is trying to do now to stop them? My worst nightmare is that the Arabs send five million people against the Israeli border. Hordes of humanity come right through Iraq and march on Israel. Not as soldiers, babies in their arms, old people, and they send four or five million people against Israel. Tell me what Israel's options would be then. I'll be back on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Uh, last night's debate, we saw Jake Woodpecker try to take down Trump, and he came out uh, without a beak. We saw that Lance Previous, or whatever his name is, that weird name of the Republican National Committee, uh, is the Judas who tried to betray the Republican Party. And we understand the American left would like to see Israel disappear. So I would like to raise this, this concept for you on the left, if you can still think. If tomorrow Hamas and other Palestinian groups unilaterally put down their weapons, what would happen? Peace. If tomorrow Israelis unilaterally put down their weapons, what would follow? Millions of dead Jews or exiled Jews. End of story. Anyone on the left like Bernie Sanders who does not see this is living in another universe. They're living on Pluto. Leftists who support peace must support Israel and not live in a, in a fool's world. A fool's world of the University of California at Berkeley. Now... We're going to go back tomorrow to uh, the open mic format. God willing, I'll be here because each day is not a given for me. Do you take each day as tomorrow will come? That sun, the sun also rises. Do you actually know that tomorrow you will awaken? I hope you do, but actually you don't. It's a miracle. Each day is a new birth. You know that each day that you wake up and you're alive, it's a birth, a rebirth, and you have a chance to start again. Awake, ye sleepers all. Each day is a new day, a new world, a new dawn. And we have to pray each morning. First, we have to thank God for giving us life. And then we have to thank God for giving us a brain. And then we have to say to ourselves, God, what did you give me this brain for? What am I using it for? At least that's what I think. Tomorrow is another day. The sun also rises.